Good afternoon. Today is Monday, May 29. The time right now in Singapore is 12.51 in the afternoon. Now let's do a bit of a recap. But before that, uh, we have news that the uh, the negotiation between the White House and the House of Representatives, which is essentially the Republican Party, has come to some kind of in principle agreement. Uh, of course, this is uh, a good news. But uh, again, we have to see how both parties are able to push through uh, this legislation through the Congress with the support of their own members. Okay, there are some noises that say that there are some opposition to this new deal, uh, which they have been struck up between President Biden and the Speaker of the House, Kelvin McCarthy, over the weekend. So we do not know for sure whether they are able to push it through Congress before it land up on President Biden's desk for him to sign to law. So until now and then, there is still that uncertainty. Now today we have a uh, US holiday. We have the US celebrating their Memorial Day holiday as well as the UK having their banking holiday. So both financial centers uh, will not be operating today. So the market will be super, super thin, meaning to say that the market is susceptible to wild swings. And of course, this morning upon the news that we heard over the week, that this the some call uh, so called in principle agreement between White House and the uh, House of Representatives, the market actually went up in the futures market uh, for equity index futures on the CME market has actually gone up uh, as far as the Nasdaq 100 is concerned, it's gone up by 0.6% early in the morning. I'm not sure what is the latest update, but basically the market has reacted, although in the cash market, we don't see any update here. So what we can see here is that uh, technically speaking, the Dow Jones actually bottomed up on Thursday, last Thursday at 32,586.5 and now the market is getting ready to rally. And with this uh, agreement, so-called, even though it is an in-principle agreement, market is likely to react to the upside. And of course, pending any untowards uh, 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 opposition to the new bill, uh, the market may actually continue to trade higher. In immediate target will be the month high at 34,257.8. Okay, this will be the immediate target. Now, in the S&P 500, we do see uh, the S&P 500 has already traded to the year high at 4,212.8 on Friday. And of course, the market is likely to trade higher. Uh, target remains at 4,240 to 4,340 levels. And this will be likely to challenge the August high, which is at 4,325.3. Okay, so the immediate, I think the market wants to go higher because the market has already taken up the year high and uh, we are on the way towards the higher levels. Okay, over in the NASDAQ 100, like I mentioned, uh, the NASDAQ has always been leading the charge higher and we can see that the NASDAQ on Friday is at a new high for the year at 14,330 there about and this is a breakout of prices which I think will put it very vulnerable to, set, uh, to profit taking. So if there's going to be any heavy profit taking, it's likely to happen within this bracket of prices. I'll be surprised if, if market continue to, to charge beyond 14,700. Okay, but, but never say never, but I think there is that possibility here. So we have to watch how this market reacts uh, when it do open tomorrow, okay? Over in Asia, we can see the net, uh, the Nikkei continue to charge higher to 31,560 this morning. This is a new high since August of 1990. And this high here is within a hair breadth away from my target at 331,605. Not that far away, market may actually go up to this level and maybe a little bit beyond, okay? In the meantime, it's no longer suitable to chase. Watch out for profit taking as the market unfolds. Over in Hong Kong, we see that the market attempt to, to rally, but got pushed back uh, at midday at 18,620 is the low so far. And, uh, it is still languishing near the bottom of this trading range. Market right now is within a range of prices that may actually be conducive to find a support. The level here is 18,256 to 18,737. So this level may actually see some kind of support coming in because the market has done a three-wave very neat equality pullback from 20,865, from 20, okay? Likewise, uh, over the long term, if we take the high here at 22,700, the bottom is nowhere near in place yet. Market may actually go around all the way to test anywhere between 16 to 17,000 levels. So we have a bit of a drop here, but in the meantime, short term, I do expect a bit of a bounce to happen. Okay, over in China mainland uh, index, which is the CSI 300, we also see an attempt to rally, but 
if eventually it got sold back down into this bracket of prices between 3760 to 3850 levels now this level again very similar to the Hang Seng may actually find some support because the the, the climb from 4170 is in a three wave pattern and all we need now is for the market to stabilize before it rebound so we may actually get to see a rebound as it happens okay over in the oil market in the WTI market has actually rallied from the low last week of seventy dollars and ninety four cents to the high this afternoon at uh at uh, seventy three dollars and fifty one cents so far. So if this is the high, the market may actually come back down again uh in a three wave pullback from seventy four dollars and sixty nine cents towards the sixty seven dollars and ninety cents to sixty nine dollars and seventy six and i think the market should be able to stabilize here and actually create a condition for a push higher beyond the seventy six dollars and seven cents which is the month high so far potentially uh targeting eighty dollars per barrel okay over in precious metal we can see the oil uh, uh gold market continue to be depressed uh, it is still hovering below the $1,950. In fact, it's trading at $1,945. Very, very close to the uh, last week low on Friday, which is uh, $1,938.90. So near term, the market doesn't seem to be able to bounce because the market has actually closed below the April high. So that means the market is vulnerable to the downside. And if this continues, uh, the next level to hold will be either at the 1915 or the 1885 levels. So at least this remains the possibility in the short term. Whereas uh, gold is not able to bounce, silver has actually rebounded from the low on Friday at $22.70. And, and, and we have a high so far uh, at uh, $23.33 thereabout. So we do see a bounce in the uh, silver market coming out from this bracket of prices, which actually I was mentioning that is uh, are conducive to finding a support here, at least technically speaking. This level is $22.28 to $23.02. So let's see whether the market can bounce. Even if it can bounce, I think the market cap will be at $24.21. So upside will be very, very limited. I think the market may actually come back down again. Okay. Over in the dollar, you can see dollar index has charged to a new high at 104.34 for the month itself. So we can see the market has been going up very persistently without any kind of uh, meaningful pullback. So if the market continues to edge higher, I think the market will actually, let me refer you to the daily time frame. And uh, I think the market here is going to test the March 15, the mid-March high at 104.72. This will be the immediate barrier. So that means the market uh, for time being is no longer conducive to buy. Uh, actually, the odds will be shifting uh, uh, from here onwards to this to the downside. So I think uh, at somewhere near the 104.70 levels, we may see a more uh, determined seller coming to the market. If that's the case, market may pull back all the way to 102.40 levels to 102. 290 levels this area will be more suitable for buying overall i think the dollar strength may be coming back so if we get a uh, we get a decent pullback here maybe that will be a place to actually position long for a rally attempt to take out the much high at 105.87 eventually so over in the other currency we can see euro dollar has actually declined all the way to 107 from 111 so we have a drop of about 400 pips here and uh, we want to see what happens as the market uh, is able to uh, find a balance here so i think within this bracket of prices 106.40 to 107.40 market may find some near-term support and uh, even that's the case top side also quite limited i think somewhere between 109 to 109.50 is going to be the top and this market is a uh, higher to sell as far as i'm concerned over in uh, sterling is the same thing sterling has actually been trading at 123.10 and uh, we do see a bit of a bounce but uh, this bounce is quite weak uh, short term it may actually edge a little bit lower to test the april low uh, which is a 122.75 levels and if this level can hold then maybe we have a chance to see the market bounce back to 124 half levels aussie is the same thing aussie has broken up the much low and is currently trading at 0 0.65 40 okay the low so far is 0 0.6490 and we can see that we are beginning to see a bit of a bounce and if we can see a bounce back to somewhere around 66 dollars no 0 0.6650 to 0 0.6690 that would be a better place to actually anchor a short you can see this market has only one color which is pink color that is to me uh showing weakness the the, uh, the market is basically quite weak there's a good chance the market may eventually challenge the november low 
which is at 0 0.6385. Over in dollar CAC, uh, dollar actually rebounded back at 136.55 this morning. Very, very close to my target range of 136.57 to 137.20. So this will be an ideal bracket. If we get a bounce back into this bracket, that will be a thing for me to watch out for a uh, selling opportunity. But in the meantime, at 136.55 is close enough. I could say that it technically would have already fulfilled um, the three wave bounce from this low here, which is at uh, 133.15. So we have a three wave bounce into this bracket of prices that make it vulnerable to the downside. Dollar yen has actually uh, edged even higher uh, to 140.86 this morning. And uh, we can see that this bounce on 127.20 uh, unfolds in the three wave, very, very close to my ideal target at 141.63. Uh, then in the, uh, in the smaller degree three wave from 129.64, we can see this is also a three wave bounce that should ideally bring it to about 142.85. Okay, so anywhere between 141.60 to 142.85, that will be an ideal bracket to actually consider taking profit, uh, at least look for selling signal, okay? In the Bitcoin itself, we saw a Bitcoin actually stabilize over the weekend uh, from a low that we saw traded last week at $25,887. We saw a high this morning at $28,452 before the market pulls back. And the market in the lower time frame, let's say I show you the four hours time frame, you can see that the market actually traded slightly beyond my target range. My target range was between 27,744 to 28,184. The market went up to a high of 28,452. And you can see the market has pulled back. And on the four hours time frame, this is a reversal pattern. So do watch out for the possibility the market may actually start to decline from here. If we have another attempt back into this bracket of prices uh, around the $25,800 uh, dollars level, I think that would be still a buy because I think it's shaping up to be uh, looking very, very positive for Bitcoin itself. So there's a good possibility market could this time be finding a bottom at 26,000 and uh, maybe challenging the 30,000 beyond that to be 31,000. Eventually, I think my target will be about 33,000. Okay, so this is my short term view and uh, hope uh, you can uh, remember today is a market holiday in both UK and the US. So expect market to be very, very thin and to be lackluster. I'll see you again tomorrow. In the meantime, you take care. Bye-bye.